And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School on a warm November Saturday. Talking this morning with uh, Madison Wrestling Coach Tyson Skinner. And life is good. All right. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, you had a, a fun last uh, last 12 hours or so. You got three wins to start start the season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Friday night quads over mm -hmm. in Switzerland County. Normally, yeah, it's an event that we started at Madison, but uh, when they extended the girls, well, I'm not sure if it was a girls or boys basketball season, one of the basketball seasons, mm -hmm. and then we started to have a conflict, but Switzerland County was nice enough to <clears throat> host it every other year for mm -hmm. us. Wrestling season comes around always too early like every sports season does, and I know you guys uh, stay busy during the off season. And let's uh, let's go back and reflect uh, on the, not only last season but the last couple of seasons for the wrestling program. Talk a little bit about the, your progression to where you're at right now with your program. Well, last couple of years we've we've really suffered from upperclassmen uh, mm -hmm. leadership. Uh, we've really had uh, low numbers in some of our upper uh, or upper grades. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's just a uh, school mentality or what it may be, but I've no, talked to other coaches. And it seems like across the board, some of our uh, some of the other coaches were experiencing the thing same issues with yeah. uh, numbers being lower for uh, some of the grade levels but we're slowly starting to get through that uh, this year we've got a good crop of seniors uh, we've got a good group of uh, juniors so and we've got a really good group of freshmen so uh, I think we're we had that two-year law mm -hmm. and even in that law we were uh, still able to have winning seasons so mm -hmm. it's always good when you say your bad years are still winning seasons <laughs> <laughs> you get to the to the point where and and you and I have talked about this over the last several years where sometimes when they when they come across the creek between the junior high and the high school they kind of get swept away and and you, you kind of lose kids are you still seeing that or, you, or is it, are the numbers coming from the junior high good well this year I mean we had 18 possible incoming mm -hmm. freshmen uh, we got 10 of them yeah uh, initially and now we're down to seven mm -hmm. so I mean you're gonna see some some uh, uh, issues where kids maybe have other things going on, their dual sport, like some, uh, even in junior high, you'll have kids that play basketball and wrestle at the same time. Sure. So when you get to high school, you can't do that. So yeah. they have to make that decision, but it's getting better. Uh, I noticed the uh, school corporation decided to clear all those trees out between the junior high and high school. So I'm thinking that some of the kids that got lost <laughs> and maybe in the woods. So maybe that helped this year because we had a bigger crop of freshmen than we normally have. You, you look at that and, and, we also we always talk about going down into the little league wrestling with the boys and girls club and how much that affects what you guys do at your level yeah and uh i am lucky to have uh coach bentz who used to be the head wrestling coach here and uh has had a lot of things going on personally so he didn't have enough time to dedicate as a head coach and when i came to madison he was lucky enough to stick around and, mm -hmm. and take over the youth program for us and right. uh we we really are starting to see the uh, uh dividends for that i mean camden spears is a product of our our uh, youth wrestling program and he's a junior this year mm -hmm. and uh was is our top returner semi-state qualifier last year so we're starting to see those kids uh, start trickling into the high school now and uh, uh, the big thing is just to keep them interested, not get them burnt out on the sport, and uh, make sure that that they decide not to move to Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> what what got you interested in in wrestling? Uh, well, my brothers all wrestled. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my it might have been my oldest, my middle brother Rodney. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he might have threatened me <laughs> when I was in elementary school to say you're going to wrestle because yeah. you're not a wimp. <laughs> I, he might not have used that exact term, but uh, I think it was, he threatened me, mm -hmm. and then I got into it. And for the fear of my life, I didn't get out of it. And then I, then I actually started liking wrestling when I right. was uh, in elementary school. Other sports? Yeah, I was a football player. Yeah. Uh, and they ran cross country for a couple of years in high school. Uh, ran track, uh, ate a lot and yeah. lunch in between <laughs> wrestling season and stuff. But yeah, yeah, football and wrestling were my two main loves. And then uh, yeah, I went into cross country because I was getting too fat. <laughs> yeah, and football and wrestling um, are are very comparable sports to one another. Talk a little bit about that. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, actually, it's funny. Last night we had one of our freshmen, who's a football player, mm -hmm. uh, Jacob or Dylan Fulton, mm -hmm. and 
I, uh, trying to get him to hit a blast double is just a football tackle. Yeah. I know you play football. Yeah. Tackle that kid. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't like to do that. I go, yeah. so you don't like tackling people in football games. <laughs> like, maybe that, that might be the issue. Yeah. Uh, so finally, he hit a blast double, and I go, see, it's just like a tackle. So, uh, especially the linemen, defensive players, it's really uh, a lot of the same skill sets that you'll use tackling uh, good defensive uh, stance. Uh, those, those type of foot movement, hand fighting if you're a lineman right. those type of things translate really well so uh, I really really would encourage all of our linemen to come out even if even if we, we only have one heavyweight one mm-hmm. two twenty spot but heck if they just want to improve their footwork skill right. and work skill and balance right. uh, wrestling would be the, the thing to do in the offseason but it it, 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 it complements <laughs> each each sport complements the other one. Oh yeah definitely I mean and then in wrestling we have football helps that aggressiveness mm-hmm. uh, and, and so it goes back and forth my son uh, he's a, a seventh grader this year and I've really think I've got it through his brain that he needs to do both sports uh-huh. uh, he loves football yeah uh, middle linebacker uh, fullback running back uh, and he loves the contact and then when he gets on the mat he loves just trying to destroy somebody <laughs> so I mean I I really I'm glad that he has that because that's the that's the type of uh, uh, type of example I'd like to see for all wrestlers to be football players yeah. and all football players to be wrestlers. Well, and it's and it's it's proven that if you can prove to anybody that hey, this works if you if you do it, that's that's a that's a great uh, testimonial. Yeah, and I I mean I, I there's, I've told kids that have tried it. I go, you know, wrestling's not for everybody, sure. but I wish it was. Right. Uh, I just give it a try. Come up to the room, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I was listening to a speech from uh, Coach Urban Meyer from mm-hmm. Ohio State, and he was talking about how he uh, really, really tries. And this was to a, a room full of wrestling coaches, mm-hmm. and he was talking to us about how he really tries to recruit people that have a wrestling background, especially on the defensive end and or the defensive side of the ball mm-hmm. and for linemen because yeah. uh, the tenacity and, and how it, it really teaches the balance and everything that they're looking for in those positions. So if he thinks that, then <laughs> I'm going to go with Coach, uh, mentioned you picked up three wins last night. Talk a little bit about uh, last night's match with uh, uh, Switzerland County, Greensburg, and Salem. And Salem. I, I knew I would forget somebody. Talk a little bit about it. Well, uh, it's a good opening meet for us uh, purely for – it used to be Greensburg was a sectional opponent. They did the realignment, so Greensburg is no longer a sectional opponent, mm-hmm. but they're a strong traditional program. Uh, so that gives us one tough uh, team to really face. And then uh, Switzerland County and Salem. Uh, Switzerland County is an up-and-coming program. Their uh, head coach actually used to wrestle for me over at, Switzer- or over at Scottsburg. Mm-hmm. And uh, Salem is just another local team that we get in there. So it's a good barometer for us, especially, I mean, we have seven freshmen uh, battling for varsity spots. We had five in the lineup last night. So it's a good trial by fire type meet for those kids, but it's not sure. something where they're going to go out there and get their bells rung and yeah. say, I quit. Yeah. This sucks. Right. <laughs> so uh, it's still something that they can get their feet wet and not feel completely overwhelmed. So it was a, it was a good meet for us. And that's, and that's a good way – Win or lose last night, that's a good way for for this team to start the season. Yeah, we've only we we've been doing this meet for five years, mm-hmm. maybe four year, four or five years. I'm not sure of the exact time, but we've only went three and zero once at it, mm-hmm. uh, and that was the year we won regionals. Now I'm not saying this is this team's going to win regionals, right? But I mean, it's a tough enough meet where to go three and zero, it's an accomplishment. But um, we're a far, we're a long way from competing for a regional title, but. It's still a good start. And, and you get off to a good start and get kids some confidence and as they build towards the season. Because it's a, it's a long season, but it's a short season. Yeah, it goes, well, I mean, we have uh, 39 matches, I mm-hmm. think, leading into uh, sectional. So yeah. there's a lot of mat time. Right. But it's, it's condensed. We have a lot of multi-team events, six ways mm-hmm. and on Saturdays and whatnot. And our holiday tournament would sure. get 10 matches in. So it's a long season by how much beatings and the kids mm-hmm. are going to take, but it's a short season because before you know it, it yeah. flies by. You and you, something I know you and I have hit on in the past is, and we talk about the endurance for kids when they have those. You know, last night was a three-way, so you, you got to go three times last mm-hmm. night. So I mean, it's it's one of those where you you can't use all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. You got to save something for later matches. Yeah, and, and uh, the host school 
kind of dictates what's going to uh, who's going to match up to who. And sure. So they change it a little bit, and so of course we the toughest team there was Greensburg, and that's who we faced out of the gate. Right. So I, I warned the kids. I go, oh, listen, this is going to be your toughest match. So mm-hmm. make sure you're ready. And, right. and they were ready. We wrestled yeah. really well, but then you still have to come back and wrestle two more times. Right. And and again, you you take a, a, a school like Greensburg, and that's not to take away anything from anybody else, but you take a school like Greensburg that you know is going to be tough. You know they're going to have to be at the top of their game. But then you don't want to have that mental letdown for the rest of the matches. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of what, and that was another good test for our young guys too to kind of get them. And I mean, we had half the uh, half the freshmen like, oh, I was supposed to bring something to eat. And I was like, yeah, you're supposed to. Remember we talked about that. Oh, okay. A learning yeah. experience. Yeah, so half the kids didn't even bring food with them to eat over three matches. <laughs> learning experience, yeah. and always got to do it the hard way. That's that's for sure. Uh, what do you what did you take out of it last night as a coach? Uh, going into the, the next match for you guys? Uh, we looked really good on our feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was one thing that the whole coaching staff was impressed with, but that's really what we've been focusing on mm-hmm. um, with the young squad that we have. I mean, we've got good upper leadership, but to try to bring those young kids to where they need to be so we can move on, uh, we've really been focusing on our setups, leg attacks, mm-hmm. uh, all of our footwork stuff on our feet, and we looked really good there last night. Uh, I think it really dawned on me, Ben Brumfield, a freshman, mm-hmm. uh, hit a really nice shot and I was like holy yeah yeah I was shocked by that yeah. because he was wrestling a kid that I thought was a pretty good wrestler and he made yeah. him look like chump change and I was like <laughs> okay yeah. I guess we're good on our feet but right then in turn we really haven't covered a lot of stuff on the mat and mm-hmm. that showed last night uh some of the kids look lost mm-hmm. uh like they were I don't know asleep yeah but they didn't know what was going on right. on that but we really haven't covered anything so right. you got to take your wins and losses so we'll the good things we've been covering we right. looked really good yeah and so we expected the things we hadn't covered to well it's rusty. like it's like any first game first match first whatever you you, you expect mistakes to be made you also expect you know or you would hope for 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 a lot of good stuff, and I think you got that last night. Yeah, the that's we told them going in, like as long as we look good on the stuff we've been focusing on, right. that's what we did. We right. looked good, and we told them we're like, we know we haven't even showed you guys a lot of switches or stand ups, so mm-hmm. on bottom just try to survive. <laughs> so that's what they did. Yeah, then I mean, that, they that, did well, and that's and that's good, and that's what you you're going to build for for the for the remainder of the season. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the, what your schedule looks like. Uh, well, actually, before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about your, some of your your team members. What about your seniors? Okay, uh, we've got. Uh, probably he's not a senior, but one of our top returning kids. Yeah. I'll clarify, he's this will be his last year because he's going to be moving. His mom took a new job. Uh-huh. We're lucky enough to have him one more year, so <laughs> I'm going to throw him in the lineup as a senior. Right. Uh, but Camden Spears, mm-hmm. uh, semi-state qualifier for us last right. year. Uh, Going to be a big loss to the program. His uh, younger brother has already moved up to Indy, but uh, since he's already started the season, decided to finish out the season with us. So, But he'll be at Plainfield for his senior year. We'll miss him. Uh, yeah. I told him I'm going to try to use and abuse him for one year and, <laughs> well, sure. and get a state uh, placer right. out of him. Right. But uh, he's, he's going to be a... Uh, a not senior senior for us right <laughs> and then uh gabe bennett mm-hmm. had an outstanding night last night he's a senior wrestling 160 for us uh looked really sharp mm-hmm. greensburg match man i was blown with the kid I, yeah it was a, just a walking muscle that he wrestled and uh gabe really took it to him yeah had several takedowns on the kid he looked really tough uh ethan schaefer wrestling 170 for us uh, another senior in our lineup that uh, a football player also yeah. And uh, looks t- a strong kid, makes some mistakes on top, uh, but he's very aggressive, always is a go-getter, taking it uh, to people. And uh, our last senior is uh, Otto Kling. Kid has, I he's probably the one I'm most blown away with, with mm-hmm. body transformation from when he started wrestling. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Ghostbusters, <laughs> but the Michelin Man yeah. in Ghostbusters, yeah. that's what he looked like as a freshman like, yeah. when he first came here. And now he like, I mean, he's winning sprints in a room when we're doing uh-huh. uh, sprints. And it probably, in what, I mean, probably one of the better shaped kids we have on the team, and he's a heavyweight. Yeah. So completely looks like a different individual. So yeah. I'm really impressed with uh, how far he's come in the last four years. Well, and I, before we go on, I want to I want to talk about that progression for when you see these kids when they come in as freshmen or sophomores or whatever to the point where they're seniors now. Do you like what you've seen from them? Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, 
I say the Michelin man, and I just because I always pick on him. <laughs> Gabe Bennett uh, started off really, really good shape. Mm-hmm. The junior year came in looking like the Michelin man. <laughs> uh, I found out that his parents told me he likes uh, buckets of ice cream ah, in the off season. Yeah. So I think he liked too many buckets of ice cream. <laughs> and then this year came in and he looks really good. I yeah. mean, he's in really good shape. You can tell he cut back from five buckets of ice cream a week <laughs> to maybe two. So he's in a lot better better shape yeah. this year uh, and like I said last last night proved I mean beat the tar out of yeah. the kid from Greensburg you uh, and it's it got to make a coach feel pretty happy when kids when they're away from wrestling are doing the right things yeah and I mean we I have club practices where I try to get the kids up in the room and mm-hmm. uh I mean, this summer has been really neat because I've had kids that have messaged me say, hey, let's go lift weights or, hey, right. let's you, you want yeah. to do some live wrestling in the office. Uh, it, yeah. It's like, and I, now I live in Madison, so I don't care. Right. I mean, I get calls at like 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> hey, let's go to the mat room. You, you want to do some live wrestling? Yeah. I was like, sure, yeah, we can go. I'm, it keeps me from having a heart attack and dying. It'll <laughs> keep me in shape. So, yeah, I mean, when I'm more than happy when kids will call yeah. me in the off season and want to go do something active. Mrs. Skin. Is a uh, very understanding woman, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, understands I'm not at the house. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Coach, uh, you, you mentioned uh, your your upperclassmen, your seniors. Talk a little bit about the rest of your squad. Well, I've uh, I touched on uh, one junior who's yeah, a senior, right? So we're going to call him a, a junior, <laughs> uh, Camden Spears, and then Dante O'Banion's another junior for us. Uh, he, his dad, I wrestled with his father, uh, Buster O'Banion, and that, his dad actually is one of our junior high coaches. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess you could say a little bit of a legacy there. Sure, and. Uh, He's doing well. Had had a little misstep last night, but he's a 126 pounder for us. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Andrew Beaumont, new to the sport, <clears throat> AKA Speedy. Yeah. Uh, I'm I, not so fast sometimes, but <laughs> Speedy. Uh, He's uh, stepping into a varsity spot, <clears throat> and being a new new kid to the sport, that can be tough. So right. uh, we we have set different goals for him on like make you know make it three periods right. or don't give up a pin. Right. I mean, he understands that he's new to it and still learning. So well, and that learning curve for somebody new just coming in, especially at the high school level, has got to be tough. Yeah, I mean, if you've never done wrestling and decide to do it, it's unless you have any type of like uh, martial art background, right. like uh, jujitsu or something, it's going to be a completely different world. World. Right, um, and Andrews is kind of like that. I mean, he's like gives me this look a lot. Yeah, uh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, but he's he's done well. But Patty won the back though for doing. Yeah, it. I tell know. him it's like, hey, you're still here. Yeah. That's a lot more than some other kids. I mean, we had. We've had a couple kids that lasted two practices. <laughs> we had one that lasted ten minutes one time. All right, I've been here. <laughs> Run him off in ten minutes. We did cardio and then he left. <laughs> I go, where are you going? He's like, not for me. Not for me. Well, at least they identified anyway. <laughs> and then uh, Eric Leach is another kid. He was one when I was referring to people that were giving me calls in the off season mm-hmm. about sure. what to do. Eric was one of those kids. Yeah. Uh, been traveling down to New Albany. Uh, there's an academy mm-hmm. down there mm-hmm. for off season work. So Eric's been putting in a lot of work. His body's completely changed too. I mean, he was another pudgy kid. Yeah. And uh, I think he he hung out with Gabe. He hangs out with Gabe a lot, so I think they share buckets of ice cream <laughs> possibly from time to time. Sure. But he's he looks really solid yeah. uh, this year. Had a misstep last night, uh, and it it's kind of reminiscent of I don't know if you remember Mitchell Sandlin. Sure. Uh, had the same exact experience. We were wrestling against Greensburg, mm-hmm. and this is the year Mitchell placed eighth in state mm-hmm. and was beating the tar out of a Greensburg kid and then gets caught on his back and stuck. Yeah. And Mitchell uh, destroyed a couple locker banks <laughs> uh, at the high school <laughs> after that, and we had to settle him down. But then he goes the rest of the season. I think that was one of his, like, three losses going into mm-hmm. in the state, and he was a semi-state champion. Right. So I'm not saying Eric's going to be yeah. a semi-state champion, but right. – it's not unheard of for somebody to lose their first match of the season and sure. then turn, turn it around, especially to a Greensburg kid. It kind right. of mirrors it. Right. Uh, and then Ryan Hoffman is another kid that uh, he's kind of – he's fun to have around. We'll mm-hmm. put it that way. He yeah. – he, uh, 
doesn't understand everything about wrestling, but he's willing to put in the work. He shows up to practice. Sometimes we have to kind of direct him to where he needs to be, but he's there. Right. And, and he fills in a spot. Got a got a varsity win last night for us. Got a forfeit at, at uh, 95. Mm-hmm. So uh, we got him into the lineup. So it's right. fun to have Ryan there. Uh, sometimes it can be a little less fun yeah. trying to, to corral him. But, right. yeah. So th- those are our juniors. Yeah. And uh, – you, you, your numbers, you, we were talking, I think, before we went on the air, your numbers, not too bad. Yeah, uh, we closed, got close to 30 wrestlers at the start of the year. Right. Um, and then, like we've talked over the course of this uh, discussion, we've had kids that decided, wow, that's cardio, I don't like it. Right. And they quit. Or they have other things come up, mm-hmm. uh, injuries, whatnot. Um, so we're, we're hovering around 21 mm-hmm. right now. We've got two kids out with injuries. Uh, one's a season-ending in- injury. J.J. Stone broke uh, something in his leg. <laughs> it was bad. Ah. It was right on the growth plate. So ah, yeah. he's on crutches, mm-hmm. but still coming to practice. Sure. Uh, he's a football player. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those freak things. One of our lightweight kids rolled up on the back of his ankle in the yeah. middle of practice and, ah. and snapped it. And then we've got... Uh, another one of our girls who uh, suffering with a concussion. Yeah. So when they get back, they'll be nice. Yeah. JJ, of course, won't be back this season, sure. but next year. And you you do have a young lady wrestling for actually two, but one actually active. Yeah, Kelsey Bills is mm-hmm. one of our one of our seven freshmen, and uh, she wrestled varsity 106 for us. Uh, I think as a freshman, she's probably one of the more aggressive people we have in the room. Uh, she was wrestling with one of our volunteer coaches last week, and we were working on crossface cradles. And he was like, "God, she's got the meanest <laughs> crossface here." And, I mean, I could hear the pop from right the crossface all across the mat room, and she smiles all the time. She does like ah, yeah. ah eating it up, <laughs> ripping crossfaces. But uh, yeah, she's very aggressive. I I really think she sticks with the sport because there's girls wrestling girl wrestling teams in college. Sure, she easily could have a scholarship wrestling at, yeah. uh, in college level, and who knows what happens after. That. That. Yeah. Uh, what anybody else on the team you want to mention before? Yeah, yeah. I'll just go through sure. here. Uh, we've got our sophomores, Jacob Skirvin. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's trying to get down to 106. Uh, right now, he's at 13 behind Camden. So, I mean, that's there's no shame in that. Right. Uh, Eli McGillen is another one of our sophomores that I expect big things out of him before he's graduated. He's he's very solid on his feet. Very strong kid. Uh, I mean, he's got like. I think 40 brothers and sisters, so he's got to be strong. <laughs> That's I right. They, they have to battle for food every day. But uh, comes from a great family. Mm-hmm. Uh, family very supportive of him. Uh, he's a, a go-getter, always working hard in practice. Uh, Skyler Lee is another strong kid that we have. Uh, he's a cross-country runner, upper weight kid as a sophomore. Uh, sometimes can be a little too nice on the mat, mm-hmm. but a uh, great leg rider uh, when we can get him into the legs. Uh, so that that's all of our, our sophomore class is a little thin. Yeah. We've had, had two of our sophomores that were football players, so the linemen decided to focus on lifting weights, which sure. I, I think one of those kids uh, could have been a state placer in a, like maybe a year or two, and the other kid probably could have been a state placer before he graduated. Right. So it, it, it hurts when you have kids like that that you see a lot of potential in the league. Sure. But those are two of our sophomores that left. Uh, and then freshmen, we talked about Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke McCarty uh, won the varsity spot at 126. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's a freshman for us. Looked really solid last night. Still new to the sport. Football player, so that's another good combo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mason Long, another football player at 126. Uh, Great hair. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he's he not, he's been wrestling, been doing some off season stuff. So yeah. uh, I expect things out, big things out of him. Ben Brumfield uh, made a mistake of moving close to me, so <laughs> he's never going to be able to miss practice. Uh, ah, yeah. about it. That's uh, right. He moved here last year uh-huh. from Nebraska, I mm-hmm. believe. Uh-huh. Um, so he's happy that we have corn here, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, but he's a strong kid. Had a big win against uh, Greensburg last night, mm-hmm. so that was impressive. Uh, J.P. George, uh, I mean, he's got initials in his first name. Sure. He's got to be tough. Right. Um, and uh, he's one kid I wasn't sure we were going to keep. He's another football player, as Ben is. Most of our freshmen are football players, sure. which is another positive. Right. But uh, J.P., I, last year came out for wrestling. 
I wasn't sure if he was going to stick with it, and then heck, surprisingly, he came out for the team as one of our one of our hardest working freshmen. So yeah. uh, that's a, a good thing. And then Dalton Barry, another football player. Uh, I think he's a linebacker mm-hmm. and a running back for sure. the freshman football team. Um, surprisingly, as a running back, he's not as quick as I think. Mm-hmm. I always yell at him in practice for. <laughs> not being first <laughs> i always tell him if you're not first you're last but i don't think he gets that <laughs> reference from Talladega nights that's right um but he, he's behind gabe of course at 160 sure. uh, but i mean in the wrestle off him and uh, gabe had a close wrestle off mm-hmm. so a freshman against a senior and he kept it close uh hit a couple takedowns on gabe so i mean that's yeah. that, that's a good sign our last freshman uh fulton dylan fulton mm-hmm. Uh, his dad also was a, a wrestler at Madison. Actually, his dad used to always beat our youth coach, Dustin, uh-huh. until like maybe a sophomore year, and that's when, or sophomore or junior year, and yeah. that's when Dustin placed in state. So yeah. his dad was a very strong wrestler. Uh, and so it's good having those those kids that have a legacy and sure. their parents understand Madison wrestling coming right. in. But he's also a football player. Yeah. So we got a lot of football players in our freshman line, uh, yeah. freshman uh, group, so I'm happy about that. Coach, let's uh, kind of look at the what you see coming up in the season, some of the matches you might want to highlight as we head throughout the, the course of this winter months. Yeah, the big one uh, – the closest big one, I guess you could say, is uh, Tuesday we wrestle at Providence. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a military appreciation night. We used to do it later in the year, but uh, decided to kind of move it up in the season so it's closer to Veterans Day. Sure. Uh, so we'll wrestle down at Providence. We'll, we'll wear our camouflage singlets to mm-hmm. uh, honor veterans. And So if you're a veteran out there and you want to yeah. watch wrestling, come down to Providence. Yeah. and You can do a little shopping in Clarksville. That's right. That's right. Maybe go check out the, the Red Lobster, <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know if we'll have enough time. But, uh, yeah, come down and check us out. We'll be down there. And then mm-hmm. uh, we actually threw some scheduling errors from the Jeffersonville Athletic Department are going to host the Hoosiers Conference Wrestling Tournament this year. Oh, wow. So we uh, – and I will say, because I'm really good friends with the Jeffersonville head coach, yeah. and he hates it every time I bring this up, <laughs> that they had a basketball game that they scheduled on accident. So they couldn't host conference because they couldn't reschedule. But our new athletic director was able – to reschedule a basketball game yeah. so we could host conference. <laughs> so I don't know whose athletic department's better, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so we, we're we going to host conference this year. Uh-huh. Um, and then, of course, we have our Cub Classic sure. holiday tournament. Uh, that's always a big one over the holiday break. Two, two days, 12 teams will come in, sure. 10 matches. Kids feel like they've been beaten up yeah. and mugged afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so those are the big ones. And then, of course, we're doing something new this year. And if anybody hasn't stalked me on social media, please do, because we're doing a pin, for, pin cancer oh. uh, fundraiser uh-huh. all season. Right. And I've got the links. I post them on all, like our, our, our Insta Twitter and mm. Face Space and yeah. all those pages. Sure. And uh, all, all it is is you can either donate a flat fee mm-hmm. and it will go towards the uh, the pin cancer fundraiser that goes to a children's hospital. Sure. All the money goes to We don't keep any of it. Right. Uh, or you can, if you're really daring, you can donate a per pin. So every pin that we score over the course of the season, right. uh, you'll donate so much money. So so if you're out there listening, we average about 160 pins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't donate like 20 bucks per <laughs> pin because then you'll be broke and then you'll hunt me down right. and, and want to hurt me. That's <laughs> right. So like a dollar or 50 cents a pin, something right. like that. Sure. And that all is done online. Mm-hmm. You don't have to pay us anything. Uh, it, I'm I'm more than willing to take donations sure. if you want to give me money. Sure. I like personally uh, <laughs> just make checks out to Skinner. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's something new we're going to do, and we're going to really highlight that uh, uh-huh. when we host the uh, Nick Shaddy Memorial Tournament. Because, right. as we all know, he's a former wrestler and coach sure. that we lost due to cancer. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to uh, do that and focus, uh, bring att- attention to our pin cancer fundraising right. drive that we're doing on that, that it's first Saturday in January. Right. So, so we'll really focus on it then, have all the kids decked out in our pin cancer shirts. Sure. Officials will be wearing it. Yeah. We'll have a little spiel and, good. and talk about it. Well, good deal. Yeah, you guys still, uh, you're hosting the Hoosier Hills Conference, but you still participate in the Big Jeff Classic? 
Yes, yeah. Jeff Classic Tournament is uh, right before Christmas. Uh-huh. Uh, I wanted to say the seventeenth, mm-hmm. maybe I don't know yep. the date, but right. I, I think that's somewhat cool yep. uh, on date. But yeah, it's a neat tournament. It's a good barometer uh, early on in the season. Uh, a lot of tough teams are in that tournament, uh, so it's a, a sixteen-team tournament bracket individually. Um, we've I think won it once maybe and mm-hmm. got runner up twice yeah. in that tournament. So it's not uh it's not a cakewalk. Yeah. And uh, if we can get kids that can get to the finals and that's a good indication that right. they're gonna make a long trip in the state tournament. Right, and that's and you kinda of took the words right out of my mouth. It's a, it's why I brought it up as a good barometer to see where your kids are at at this point in the season. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean because you uh, schedule wise you try to get tough competition early on, but mm-hmm. you know everybody's schedules are already set so sure. it's hard to do it. But the Jeff Classic brings in I mean Danny does a great job of getting yeah. getting some top notch teams. Modern day I'm not sure if they're back this year, but mm-hmm. they've been in the tournament. Bloomington South has been in the tournament. Sure. Uh, they get some of the top teams from Kentucky, San yeah. X and whatnot. Right. So yeah, it's a good mix of talent. Yeah, indeed it is. Anything else you want to add before we wrap things up today? I know we got a long wrestling season ahead of you. Oh, I'm uh, I'm talked out. <laughs> I'm old. I'm probably gonna go take a nap. Uh, I'm right there with you, my friend. Well, best of luck this wrestling season. And hopefully good things will come uh, through the end of the season. All right, appreciate it. All right, the Madison Wrestling Coach Tyson Skinner live from McDonald's here on this Saturday morning. We'll do it again next Saturday, 9 a.m. across from the Madison High School at the Madison McDonald's. For Rob Conant in studio, Tyson Skinner, my, my host, I'm Tim Torrance. We'll see you next time for Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.